hobbies. Let's talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin. It's almost 65 to make Bitcoin an official currency. Last time we talked about crypto, it kind of seemed like the good times would just never end. Cryptocurrency is going mainstream. Fortune favors the brave. Crypto.com arena. And then they did. It's been a brutal week for crypto investors. Founder and CEO Sam Bankman fried has announced his official resignation. Not only did all these graphs go down, but one of the largest crypto platforms went bust when we discovered that the founder was using tons of investors' money to fund his other company and not telling anyone. Totally not okay. Crypto exchange FTX filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy today. It's safe to say there were red flags all over the place. As of last week, it was worth $32 billion. Like surely it had to be some sort of scam. This is why you're seeing this guy's face all over the news lately. He literally lost like over $10 billion overnight. So now I feel a bit vindicated. While all of this turmoil has been going down, crypto actually had a huge win lately. Something that no one's really talking about. Waiting for the merge. The merge. The merge. They really solved one of their biggest problems. So that's what I want to focus on today. So what happened? And is it enough to save the cryptoverse? Let's do this. The merge is perhaps the most important update in Ethereum's history. Can you explain it to everyone? This is the biggest development in the crypto space. The crypto's most ambitious change to date. Hey, before we go on, I need to pay my bills and thanks to today's sponsor. Cut now to that, please. Boy, do we have something good in store today. I'm not going to spoil it, but let's just say it took an entire day to film this video. Before we get into it, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is a service that we're actually using to make this video kind of meta. Thank you, Storybox, for supporting this video. Check this out. Crypto Farm. With Storybox, you pay one set price, and then you get unlimited access to all of this stuff. There's over a million assets on this website, and you can download as much as you want. Like, as much as you want. What I like to do is just download a bunch of this stuff, test it out in my edit, the stuff I use, I use. The stuff I don't use, I'm not charged for. All right, maybe I don't want footage, maybe I want templates. Like if you're not an animator, but you kind of want to be an animator, literally you can just download an After Effects template and you're an animator. Yeah, I know how to animate, but I secretly use templates all the time. It cuts down on hours of work. And they just made a plugin for Premiere. So you could literally just have Storyblocks inside of your video editor. You're just pulling stuff. You're not like going and downloading and moving the file. It's all in Premiere. I've been using Storyblocks for literally a decade, well before I was a YouTuber or before they came to sponsor a video because it's seriously the best place to find a bunch of really good stuff for very cheap. You pay one set price, either annual or monthly. That's it. There's no hidden fees. There's no extra thing. And it's a very small price to pay to take back your creative control and to have like access to all of this good stuff. So thank you Storyblocks for supporting this video, for supporting my channel. There's a link in my description. It's storyblocks.com slash Johnny Harris. Clicking that link, unsurprisingly, helps support this channel but it also allows you to go learn more about how to get in on this amazing service. Thank you again, Storyblocks. All right, let's get into this crypto video. We've got a lot to cover. Okay, so before we get into what changed in the cryptoverse, which is a very big deal, let's do a little refresher for those who need it, this time with a little bit of a spin. Hold on a sec. Welcome to Crypto 102. This is really stupid, why am I doing this? Every time I have to explain the blockchain to people, I have to do some gimmick to be like, I'm gonna teach you the blockchain using the simplest version. No, I'm done. I'm not doing it. Fuck the blockchain. Let's do this. If you wanna understand why internet money is making the ocean rise, all you really have to understand is this. This is a crypto mining farm. It is a warehouse full of specialized computers that have one job and one job only, solving math problems. These things are all over the world. Hell, I was in a Swiss bunker a couple weeks ago, and the guy I was interviewing had one of these things. Mining Bitcoin at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Right? Is this just another way for me to slip in Switzerland to a video that's completely unrelated? It totally is. Any chance I have, I will mention my favorite country. Anyway, these machines all over the world are sitting here racing against each other to solve a complicated math puzzle first. And if you're the lucky computer that solves one of these complicated puzzles, you win the race. And that allows you to verify what's called a block, which is just a little box of data. On the Bitcoin blockchain, for example, this block is only one megabyte of data. It's just big enough to hold like 2,000 transactions that people have made with their cryptocurrency. 
As you publicly verify this block of transactions, it gets added to a long chain of a bunch of other blocks that have been verified by the same math puzzle race process, and they sort of get strung together into a publicly available, totally verified chain of transactions, verified by fancy computers that do a bunch of math. It is called a blockchain. Wait, no, I'm not here to explain the blockchain. I'm supposed to be explaining this. So why would a bunch of people around the world pay a lot of money to make these big warehouses so that they can verify a math puzzle? Because if you're the one who owns the computer that successfully solves the math puzzle and verifies the block of transactions, you get rewarded. In the case of Bitcoin right now, you'd get 6.25 Bitcoins, which is like, I don't know, nothing more than $125,000. So yeah, there's a huge incentive for people to build these things and to mine all day for Bitcoin. Anyway, this race to complete math problems uses up a lot of processing power, a lot of energy. It takes a whole lot of work for your computer to run through all of these computations trying to figure out what the answer is. And that's why this method is called proof, proof of, of work. work. Every computer that verifies the transactions on the blockchain has to do a lot of work. This is all well and cute until you think through all the energy that goes into building these machines, and then you think of the electricity it takes to run them, day and night. And then you remember that they get really hot when they're running all the time doing these computations, so you need to cool them down with AC units. And then remember that most of the electricity we use today comes from burning hydrocarbons, which releases a nice thick blanket of CO2 into the atmosphere that warms the planet and contributes to the ongoing global warming crisis. So yeah, that's how the math money makes the ocean rise. But that problem may have just been solved. Ethereum pulls off the merge. Ethereum just got revamped. The second largest blockchain, Ethereum, which is home to the cryptocurrency Ether, has just completely changed the way that it does the whole crypto electricity math verification thing. This isn't just some like changing the code and hitting update. This verification process that they change is like the beating heart of the blockchain. Switching it out for something new is like switching out the engine of a car while it's hurling down the road at like 120 miles an hour. Insanely difficult to do. So insanely difficult to do that nobody else has ever dared to try it. But Ethereum, they were like, it's worth it. For the planet. So they start working on this transition for years and years. They're tinkering away, they're testing it, they're perfecting it. They're Until September 15th, 2022, when they finally flipped the switch and... So, what happened? Did it all crash and burn and die and the Ethereum blockchain is no more? Did the car go hurtling off the highway without an engine? No, actually, it went off without a hitch, which again, for me, I'm just like, cool, good job guys. But the thing that blew my mind is this. Look at this graph. I mean, look at this graph. This is the energy consumption of the Ethereum blockchain. Look at that drop off. We're talking about a 99.5% drop in power consumption for this blockchain. I mean, to give you some context here, before this transition, which they called the, the merge, merge, the Ethereum blockchain was consuming the same amount of electricity as the country of Chile. It's as if a major developed country was suddenly taken off the planet's energy bill. The CEO of the Ethereum blockchain claimed that this one software update has reduced global power consumption by 0.2% which is just like they did this by changing from the math puzzle race the proof of work race which they had to do to verify all their transactions to a totally different system called proof of stake so now instead of having a bunch of computers around the world racing each other all sucking up energy to do this big math race now every computer that wants to verify a block has to put in a stake a small amount of cryptocurrency that then puts you in the running to verify a block. Sort of like buying a lottery ticket. If you want to win the lottery, you have to make the money to buy a ticket. Then, through a very complex process that I will not go into here, a single random computer is picked to verify that block and take home that sweet, sweet commission. So no more of these big crypto farms racing against each other to see who can get there first by contributing the most processing power. Instead, it's just one computer during the very light lifting of verifying a block. Because again, it was the racing, all of these machines working simultaneously that used up the power, not the verification process itself. So there you have it. The cryptoverse was saved, the power-hungry computers were turned offline, and the world energy consumption plummeted all over the globe. 
the ice caps stopped melting, Yay! and the pollution was reduced to their lowest levels in 40 years. Actually, that's not what happened at all, and the Cryptoverse is far from saved. Skeptic Johnny, I didn't know you were gonna be here. I thought you moved to Tampa. I heard you were making another video, so I thought I'd stop by. Can I come in? I guess? Um, okay, hmm, good to be back. Crypto Johnny. Hey, I heard you guys were talking about crypto, and I'm here to tell you that the Cryptoverse might not be totally saved, but this is a huge step in the right direction. I'm coming in. Oh gosh, why do crypto people always have to be so polarized? Can't we just stay curious about this new technology and just see what happens? No. No. Okay, fine. Let's do this again. Can I at least get some Doritos? Okay. Oh, I thought the video was over. Okay, let's do this. Skeptic Johnny, you start. I honestly want to hear what you have to say. I thought that the merge and this huge proof of stake thing was like a huge win for crypto. So what's your rebuttal? No, I mean, you're totally right. Having Ethereum switch to proof of stake was a huge deal, is a huge deal. Like completely, like that graph that you showed earlier, super impressive. Thank you. Didn't realize this was gonna be so amicable. But let's be clear that this is just one of a million problems facing crypto. The crypto space is still rife with scams and volatility. The real reason your little project hasn't taken off yet is because regular old people are way too afraid of losing their money with a cryptocurrency that can be worth $65,000 one month, and then a couple months later, worth $35,000. Word. Wait, what? No, that happened to me. Well, you invest? After the last video, when this guy gave his big crypto sermon, I was kind of convinced and things were going well. And so I went and I bought like a thousand bucks worth of crypto and now it's worth like 300. Yeah, case in point, you and like everyone else who dabbled in crypto. You'll make it all back, you just need to hold. Okay, but even if he does make it back, the volatility of crypto isn't actually its biggest problem. If it's not the environment and it's not the volatility, which I'm concerned about, what is it? <sighs> this ought to be good. It turns out that crypto's biggest problem is that guy. Hey, how's it going guys? Oh God, not this guy. Wait, there's more of you? What is this? I don't do this. Who the hell is this guy? That is Johnny Law, and he is hard at work thinking about how to regulate crypto. The real existential threat to crypto right now is not volatility or the environment or the lack of adoption. It is regulators. Regulators! Mauna. No one's gonna get that reference unless they had an older brother who was into hip hop in the 90s. Hey, my brother had that album too. Love Nate Dogg. Before you go into the SEC- Wait, wait, hold on, let me just finish this thought about the government and regulators before you can have your rebuttal. The fact is, we did see some governments embrace crypto, like the government of El Salvador, who like made it legal tender. At that same time, other governments were showing what it looks like when you regulate crypto. In China, they've outright banned crypto. You're not allowed to conduct any kind of transactions in or outside of the country, and you're not even allowed to mine it. Totally banned. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool, but China still accounts for the second most mining activity in the world. It's almost as if, I don't know, the rise of the cryptoverse is inevitable, okay? Governments be damned. You may actually get a front row seat to see how unstoppable the cryptoverse is because the United States may be next. No, no, you're getting it all wrong. Me and the USA, we're chill. We love crypto in the US. It's all about freedom. It's all about doing what you love, okay? Me and Matt Damon, we're like best friends. Fortune favors the brave. Yeah, but Matt Damon doesn't pass regulations in the United States. The SEC does. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. I know that one. SEC, Security and Exchange Commission, right? Yes. Great work. The real Johnny's real smart. But yes, that is correct. The SEC is a thing in the United States that is meant to protect investors. You just don't get it. I mean, look at this article that I have here from the head of the SEC that wrote it in the Wall Street Journal. Wait, did you actually print off that paper? Yes, I printed it out. It helps me read it. I'm dyslexic. Do you have an issue with that? I didn't, I didn't say that. Dude, I'm dyslexic too. And I love printing things, especially in big font. Thank you. Anyway, head of the SEC writing in the Wall Street Journal, guess how many times he mentions the environment? I mean, here, you look at it. Jeez. Does that article mention anything about the environmental concerns of crypto? Uh, hold on, I'm checking. Here, I'll just tell you, it doesn't. The SEC doesn't care about the environment, that's the EPA. The SEC cares about one thing, 
protecting Americans from being scammed. So yeah, it is amazing that the Ethereum blockchain was able to get off of its insane energy consumption. That is a great step, but the cryptoverse is still riddled with the same old problems it's always had. The problems that the SEC is rearing to sort out with a bit of good old regulation. Regular. A lot of FTX's bankruptcy calls are being renewed for oversight and legislation from Congress. But wait, they're not gonna like ban crypto in the US. Like, this isn't China, right? Ha, huh. yes, thank you. This is all overblown. I mean, yeah, they're not gonna ban it completely. You're totally right. But they could reclassify crypto as a security instead of a commodity. Right, Johnny Law? I mean, yeah, theoretically I could. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what that means. Basically what this means is that crypto would now be registered with the SEC. Like Ethereum would have to register Ether and all other applications with the government. Yeah, that doesn't sound great for the whole untraceable, unregulated crypto utopia philosophy. No, it doesn't. Okay, okay, you've talked with all your nerdy regulation stuff. This is 100% speculation. There's no proof that they're actually gonna do this. And besides, even if they do, a regulated but still decentralized monetary system is a lot better than a regulated centralized one like the one that we have with banks. I am so glad you brought that up. Oh, this is getting good. So let's talk about decentralization. It's one of the main pillars of the whole crypto project, right? Yeah, obviously. Great, then you'll be interested to know that since they did this big merge, this big flip to proof of stake, almost half of all transactions now happening on the Ethereum blockchain are taking place from two addresses. Only two, two addresses. So much for decentralized. Yeah, but the fact- Oh is... wait, I'm not done yet, one sec. I just need to say one more thing, which is all of those farms that I'm telling you about that are now like defunct and obsolete, do you really think those people are just gonna like pack up and go home and be like, well, we have no use for our like hundreds of expensive computers and mining farms in Iceland. No, they're just gonna switch to another blockchain that can use their computers to do the same old thing that they've been doing forever, which is mining blockchain through proof of work. That energy consumption isn't disappearing, it's just being transferred. Holy shit! Sorry, so sorry, but a couple weeks ago, I was in Switzerland. Is there ever gonna be a video where you don't mention Switzerland? Seriously, dude. No, of course not. But anyway, when I was in that Swiss bunker, which was right around the time that this merge was happening, it was like the end of September, they told me that they were shutting down their mining operation for a little bit. Just last week, he says it's not making money right now, so I'll take a break. Yeah. And it must have been because of the merge. Cool, and their next step was to just like destroy all of those really expensive computers and revamp the bunker to be some hip Airbnb. Is that what their plan was? I mean, no, they're probably just looking for like other blockchains to like use all their hardware on. Yeah, exactly. I was, it was sort of a rhetorical thing. I didn't know you were gonna actually try to answer the question. Um, it was kind of embarrassing. Okay, I'm gonna cut you off there because it's my turn to speak, okay? You've been just blabbering this whole time. So yes, a lot of these miners are moving to other blockchains to use their big mining farms, but this is just the beginning. This is early days. Do you realize all technologies start out clunky? You wanna hear my prediction? The biggest effect isn't the big graph that goes down to zero of all of its energy consumption, it's how it's gonna inspire other blockchains to do the same thing, to adopt proof of stake. Like imagine if the Bitcoin blockchain adopted proof of stake, it would change the world. It would literally change the world. But that's never gonna happen. Bitcoin has zero plans to switch to proof of stake or any other way of verifying. And unlike Ethereum, which is run like a business, they have a CEO, they can actually make these decisions top down. Bitcoin is this super decentralized project. You would need 51% of the users to all agree to switch something this big. It's not gonna happen anytime soon. But they might not have a choice. If the rest of this master plan that Ethereum has goes as smoothly as the merge, then it's gonna be more of a case of adapt or die. Wait, a plan? What are you talking oh, about? Oh, you haven't heard? The merge is just the beginning. Oh man, buckle up for this one. After the merge, we have the surge, then the verge, then the purge, then the splurge. Really, the splurge? Why do these tech companies always have to come up with these cutesy f***ing naming things? The surge is just the next part of the master plan. It involves massively scaling up the Ethereum blockchain, which is way easier to do now that we have proof of stake verification. Okay, so you're probably asking, what would this scaling up even do? I actually didn't ask. It would mean instead of the Ethereum blockchain being able to perform like 20 transactions per second, it would be able to perform over 100,000 transactions in a second. Guys, this is huge. 
Don't even get me started on the birch. Yada, yada, yada. I feel like this is just another set of empty words to get people excited so they invest in the math money project that you're doing. Every time we talk about crypto, it seems like it always goes to this. Some like life-changing, world-changing technology that's just right around the corner if we all just believe. It just feels like yet another stop along the crypto hype train. And I'm not here for it. Okay, okay. I think I'm gonna call it there, guys. But Johnny, I wanted to talk about The Verge. Zip it, Crypto Johnny. I'm shutting it down, okay? We've had enough. You can talk about The Verge when inevitably I make another one of these videos in like six months, because apparently that's what I do now. For now, let me just say this. The Merge was indeed an incredible technical feat. It was a huge boon for the environment. I mean, that graph is insane. This is gonna be a great thing for the planet no matter what. But will it save the Cryptoverse alone? Probably not. There are way more trials and tribulations to overcome. This technology is barely a decade old. We don't have to have these strong opinions on either side. The reality is none of us know what's gonna happen next. So why don't we all just agree to sit back, relax, and see what happens next. Nope, not gonna happen. He says the same thing every time. Let's all hold hands and be friends. No. Okay, I give up. <sighs> Whatever, do you guys wanna go to beer or something? I've actually been super into hard kombucha lately. Of course you have. Yeah, I actually know a great place down the road. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's do it.